Salams, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's first take a look at today's headlines. A new report shows Israel used Pegasus spyware to advance its diplomatic interests. 11 years later, what is the legacy of Egypt's revolution? Brazilian labor bears the brunt of pandemic and reform. Our first story is about the latest revelations from the Pegasus scandal, which continues to rock the world. A new report by the New York Times has explosive details on how the Israeli government used the export of Pegasus as part of its security strategy and to build ties with countries around the world. As we mentioned earlier, Pegasus is a highly powerful spyware which was supposedly sold only to governments to help crack down on illegal acts. But over the years, many reports have emerged of Pegasus being used all over the world to spy on dissidents, activists, journalists and opposition politicians. The latest New York Times report shows how the software was a key part in Israel establishing ties with Arab countries, which led to the Abraham Accords, whereby they recognized Israel. Another revealing fact was that a similar program made by the NSO group called Phantom was considered by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation for use domestically, but the agency ultimately de decided not to use it. Pegasus was also sold to right-wing governments in countries such as Poland, Hungary and India. We now head to Egypt, which marked 11 years since the January 25th uprising that overthrew dictator Hosni Mubarak. The promise of this mass agitation was, however, betrayed in the following years as the then army chief Abdel, Fas Fat Abdel Fattah al-Sisi came to power and put in place a brutal dictatorship that has curbed dissent and thrown critics and activists in jail. Today, there may be as many as 60,000 political prisoners in Egypt. We recently spoke to Egyptian academician and activist uh, Leila Souif, the mother of jailed activist Allah Abdel Fattah, on the situation in Egypt. Here's an excerpt from the interview. But uh, the present regime is really far, far more vicious than anything we have ever seen. Uh, and this is also, it's like madness. A regime that imagines that it can stop every single uh, dissident voice in a country of a um, uh, hundred million. I mean, I know India is, is much bigger than that. So hundred million maybe doesn't sound very big to, to Indians, but still hundred million is a hundred million. I'm a, I'm a mathematician. And I know that in a hundred million, there's always, there will always be 10, 20, 30,000 who are, yeah, the, yeah, there, there will be far more distance than that, but there will be 10, 20, 30,000 who will not be silenced at any price. So trying to silence absolutely every different voice is really yeah, beyond the pain. Uh, in Egypt, it manifests itself in a very crude way, exactly because we had, we had the revolution. Because we had the revolution, it was a popular revolution, and we saw the possibility, we saw the you know, the, 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 the another world is possible, stuff like that. And so it, it takes this very, very, very brutal repression uh, to, to make people to, yani, yani, for a regime to hope that it can make people give up on that. Okay, you can hold on to power like that for a long time. Really depends on the circumstances, but you cannot stabilize a society. You cannot stabilize it. Egypt is not stabilizing. Egypt is all is going from one crisis to another, from one crisis to another, and the uh, the way that the regime manages each crisis is by depression uh, or by ignoring the. Uh, Four causes and just uh, handling the manifestations and so on. And our final story is from Brazil, which is gearing up for a major election in October this year. In early January, senior members of the Workers' Party, including former President Lula, spoke about repealing the 2017 labor reform. Approved by the Tamer administration, these rules weakened labor rights and made work precarious. Over 40% of workers in Brazil have jobs in the informal sector with little or no access to social protections. Circumstances worsened under the pandemic, prompting protests like the strike by app delivery workers in 2020. 
The country is still facing high levels of inflation, rising prices and indebtedness. Here's a video by Brazil De Fato on the current situation of labor in Brazil. On January 11th, former President Lula, together with leaders of the Workers' Party and trade unions, met with representatives of the Spanish government and legislature to gather experiences on the reversion of the labor reform. Sociologist Clemente Gans Lucio from Perseu Abramo Foundation were at the meeting. He shares comments on the changes led by the Spanish Socialist Party. The changes are mainly thought to improve the employment contracts and combat the existing short-term employment contracts. Brazil's labor reform changed 300 legislative topics, allowing the outsourcing of all activities. It weakens the workers' bargaining power and undermines the union's actions. According to data from the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, the number of formal jobs in Brazil fell by half in 2020 compared to the previous year. Meanwhile, the total of Brazilians informally working skyrocketed, reaching 36 million workers last October, according to the Brazilian Institute of Geography and Statistics. The business environment has changed a lot since the beginning of the 21st century, and that's a central issue to a possible Brazilian labor counter-reform. Also, the employment relationship was absorbed by the new technologies, especially in the service sector. It's necessary to create a new protection model to face a different reality of labor, one where communication technology opened the door to a universe of possibilities that weren't seen until recently. We must present ways to protect workers that are not necessarily in a classical wage-earning work relationship. Nevertheless, their rights must be guaranteed as those of any other worker. A bill that introduced protection measures to app delivery workers during the pandemic became law after almost two years underway. Federal Deputy Ivan Valente, the bill's author, complains about the delay in adopting the measures, but celebrates having contributed to initiating a broader discussion on the precariousness of work. When a democratic, progressive and popular government comes to power here in Brazil, it must review this legislation that was perverse and cruel to workers. It is cruel to the workers on a daily basis. That's all we have on today's episode. For more on all of these stories, please visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and give us a follow on all the regular social media platforms. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.